Hello and welcome to Battle Strings and Left and welcome to my hobby vlog number 11 which uh, I think will be titled something along the lines of the most B-Sign thing I've ever done or the least B-Sign thing I've ever done, we shall see. More on that soon but um, I just want to set us, um, a little bit of kind of an update for you. Um, obviously if you've been following along with my hobby vlogs you might be expecting number 11 to be Project Dale 3 where we finally finish the Dale Knights and um, and heroes, but they're not quite done yet. They haven't been abandoned, fear not. Um, I'm still working on them, I've made good progress and I'm filming a little vlog, um, so that will be coming, but they've basically been stalled by a bunch of different projects. So um, after we, we were getting ready for doubles and then after that we had Articon, and then after that I went on holiday and then um, after that I've, we had um, we, we had Warhammer Teams, which I've just come back from. It's currently um, Sunday the 12th, uh, sorry, Sunday the 11th and um, I've literally come back from Warhammer Teams tonight and I'm, I'm starting this next this next vlog then. So I've had loads and loads of bits that have kind of been pausing that um, that kind of uh, project um, but I'm hoping that in a week or two I will get back to it so you will be seeing those completed nights of Dale soon. Um, but I've had some other fun things to be working on um, and one of those, um, or two of those essentially, have got me in a really kind of properly B-side mood where I'm painting, unlike the Dale stuff, I'm painting stuff just for fun very much in the spirit of the channel, and that's kind of what this um, vlog is going to be about. The first one of those was that, um, as I said, I just got back from Warhammer World Teams, and um, one of our members, one of our teammates, um, Mark Stone, had a crisis last Tuesday where the prowlers he was going to use for his army didn't turn up in time, and he wasn't going to use them. So I said, "Well, do you know what? I've got a bunch of prowlers in the backlog. Let's see what I can do." So I dug out um, my eight metal prowlers last Tuesday afternoon, and then just blitzed them in three evenings and it was so much fun. Um, couldn't care less about them. Um, there were models that were sitting there ready to die um, in, a, in my backlog for years and years but I thought well this would be a really fun challenge. Can I paint eight prowlers in three evenings? And it turns out I could. I did them really really quickly. Um, you know I'm not I'm not impressed about buying them or anything but they were they kind of thoroughly matched the the style of my plastic Mario Goblins I, um, I painted in, in Bisa and I just thought it, it seems like the thing to do. It seemed fun. Uh, as it turns out, um, Mark then got struck down by your health and couldn't make it to the um, event. So the Prowlers got painted for absolutely nothing. But that's fine and is actually even more joyous in a way. So I feel like I had a bonus um, B-Sum stream. I feel like I had Prowler Week and I got to um, got to paint up my eight Prowlers. So that was quite good fun um, last week. And what I'm now going to do is head over to the desk and show you my crappily painted Prowlers. Okay, so here are my prowlers. Um, I kind of don't want to pick these up and show you them, but um, let's go. This is part of the fun of B-Sign. So here is the, the finished effect, we, what we get. Surely some of the best painting models you've ever seen. So um, just to remind you of a recipe for these, it's exactly the same as my Mario Goblins. They were um, sprayed black, uh, dry brushed heavily with Castellax bronze, I think it is, one of the bronze ones. Then dry, dry brushed with um, lead belcher, I think it was for the for the metal. Um, that's the metal complete. Um, I then did the um, the robes, the cloths um, with corn red, I think it was, and the skin with Caliban green. And the one extra bit I did over um, over my normal Mario Goblins was was these bits here, where they've got some kind of wrappings. I painted them steel legion drab. I then um, chucked, I think it was nylon or rather than Agrax over the entire model just to kind of um, give the whole thing some shading and tie it all in um, together and then I just reset all the base colours so all the robes got um, corn red again um, all the shafts were rhinoxide I think by the way the axe shafts yeah all the reds got um, uh, whatever it was corn red all the skin got Caliban green um, the shafts got picked out with rhinoxide the gloves and the wrappings got um, uh, Steel Legion Drab. I did a little um, uh, what's after leopard Iron Breaker kind of um, highlight along the axe blades, just to um, just to make them pop. I think the hair got a kind of um, something like scaven bite dinge, a little dry brush, something like that. And then I picked out the eyes. But again, I didn't kind of like most of my B side warriors. I didn't care too much about the eyes. So let's kind of have a look at this guy. I just kind of blobbed in yellow and blobbed in black to see um, to see how they did. So um, that's it. So they they are rubbish <laughs> by any normal standards, but um, I think they do the job brilliantly well. Um, they look exactly like my um, Mario Goblins that I painted up on B-Sime did. Um, 
so they fit in with that army well and they're painted. So um, honestly, I know it sounds crazy, but I'm absolutely delighted with these um, to get eight models kind of out of the backlog that never would have been painted um, and just painted purely for the for the fun of the hobby. Feels very very beast armor and very very satisfying. So there we go, eight goblin prowlers for me um, as a nice little trailer for what we're about to get up to. So there you go. There's the um, there's the eight prowlers I did. As I said, nothing special at all. Um, they're not particularly good, but what they are is painted. Um, so they've been now chucked in the box. No plans to use them whatsoever. But it did get me um, back in the painting, you know, mode and kind of oh, let's just paint eight models from scratch in in a few days for the for the fun of it, which is really great. Um, so I've just come back from Warhammer World Teams, and now I can't get back to Dale yet because I have another project along the same lines for this week. Because next weekend, as I said, I'm recording it on Sunday at the moment. Next weekend is our B Sign Meetup 2022, um, which I'm very excited about. And I've got to paint some models for it. So, a bit of context to this. Um, some of you may remember that in my hobby vlog number seven, I showed off the Warriors of the Last Alliance that I've been painting on stream. So, if you've been following along with the streams, you'll know that a few months back we got to the four issue um, Last Alliance swing of Battle Games of Middle Earth, which was great. So, we got to do some. Um, warriors of um, some plastic elves, some warriors of Numenor, Elendil, Isildur, and Gilgalad, um, all together, which was great. And I took that as a brilliant um, opportunity to clear my backlog, and I got loads of kind of old plastics done. And I've actually got my kind of B-Syme Last Alliance army here in one of the really, really old GW cases. Some of the, you know, this this case is far older than a lot of people watching. Uh, this is what GW cases used to look like, and I've treated it. Um, I've treated my my last alliance army to live in one of these. So, um, again, if you've watched the Hobby Block Seven, if you watch the streams, you'll know this. But I had these guys. I think that's I think that's focus there. Had these guys these guys painted for ten years ago. The um, the archers, um, which were just sitting around, um, all done and ready. And what I was able to do was paint the um, plastic girls with blade. That was in Hobby Block Seven and kind of match those colours. And I also painted up the plastic Numenorians with shield. So I got those done. Um, and then I don't think they've actually been shown off on the blog, but what I also did was paint up a Lindil. Sorry, that's not a Lindil, is it? A Sildur. And a Lindil. Um, for a Sildur week and for a Lindil week. Um, and I'm super excited about them more so because Rings of Power's just started. And I think the guy who's playing a Lindil is killing it. I'm very, I'm very kind of pro Lendil at the moment. I think I'm really excited to see where that character goes. Um, I know he goes at the end, doesn't end well, but um, you know what, what his route there is. Um, so I've done those. So I've actually got, you know, I'm not suggesting this is competitive. God knows, you know, the heroes don't have horses, they don't have shields. Um, the, the, you know, the warriors. I don't have Numenorean spears and shields or anything, and it's just the plastics. But it is an army, right? I remember I've also done Elrond. I did last night's Elrond a year ago on the stream um, he's just not doesn't happen to be in this box so I've got a cool kind of last alliance army and as I said on that blog 7 um, I actually decided to take it to meet up I thought this last alliance army only exists because of battle streams in middle earth and I've got no use for any of these models when could I use it is there possibly a better answer than the battle streams middle earth meet up so I thought brilliant that's what I'll do um, so I owed myself and I owed Battle Streams a Gilgalad. So um, again, a few of you might remember on a couple of streams back, I painted up Gilgalad basically in the night. I just um, dug him out and blitzed him. I did him on Rigs of Power Week, which was really good fun. So he was ready to go. And then I started messing around with um, army lists for what I would take. And this is what I come up with. Now remember, before I show you these army lists, the point of this for me is nothing to do with being competitive. I couldn't care less. There's no optimization needed. I don't care about winning, I just want to use my rubbishly painted plastic models. That's that's the joy of it, get them on the table and get them a bit of love. So, I, I knocked things together, so I figured I'd have a, a warband of each. So I'm with a Lendil, um, eight Numenorians with shield, my lone Numenorian with bow, who got painted up um, as part of this project. Then I'll take Gilgalad, and I'd have all eight um, elves with bow, and all eight elves with elven blade. And that is all of my warriors. Okay, so I've got my 25 warriors that I've painted up, led by the High King of the Noldor and the High King of New, of, um, of the Men, essentially, um, which um, which I thought was great. And, I, and then I saw the problem with it, and I'm sure you've all seen the problem with it, so please don't kick off and write about it in the comments. The problem, of course, 
is that bow limit, even on green alliance armies, bow limit is calculated by faction and not by army total. So whilst I do have 25 models here, I can't have eight high elves with bow because I've only got 16 high elves. So that's a maximum of what, uh, what was it six um, elves that I could have with bow, um, potentially. Um, so that's quite annoying and it doesn't work. So back to the drawing board, bear in mind I've got no redundancy built into this arm. It's not like I can switch in a banner or, or anything like that. And so I then decided to go, okay, well, let's make it legal. And we end up with this. The Lend Deal, 8 New Order Shield, this New Order of Bow, the Gilgalad, 8 High Elves, and 4 High Elves of Bow. So that's exactly the same army. I just literally dropped out the 4 High Elves I can't take. The 4 ones with Bow I can't take. Um, and so that comes to 552 points. Now, bear in mind that um, I would be, I wouldn't mind playing like 50 points down, it's not the end of the world for me at something like this, but it still just felt a bit of a shame, I was like well that's a fairly big chunk that I could be using for other Last Alliance models and you know, I'd, I'd rather not play 50, 50 points down um, if possible. So I went and looked within my collection to see is there anything I can do, and of course the only other things I've got are the heroes, so I then chucked in Isildur, who's the cheapest of the heroes, to see um, how he gets on, and to fit in a sil to fit in a Sildor, you end up with a Lendil, five Numenorians, and a Sildor, possibly leading you know two or three Numenorians each in those warbands, I guess, and then Gilgalad and eight High Elves, three of whom we could buy. So that suddenly, as you can see, is 598 points. Um, but it just doesn't do what I want it to. It's probably, I don't know if it's a better army, you know, having the other hero in there is kind of useful, but of course, it, I've then got a very small number of warriors, so it'd be really easy to break me. Um, but more importantly, it just doesn't look like an army. I've got five Numenorians out of the nine I've painted, and I've got eight High Elves out of the 16 I've painted, and the point was to use all those models. So I was like, well, I don't really want to do that. So I went back to this um, this idea beforehand, like dropped a Sildor, and was like, well, what could I put in? What's 50 points I could put in? And I just had nothing. And I suddenly started um, kind of just browsing the GW web store, which is always dangerous. And I realised that High Elves with Spear and Shield come in packs of four and they are 11 points each, which um, of course gives me 44 points. Um, and I was like, oh hang on, could it be so simple? And so, and here's where we get into is it the most be something ever or the least be something ever, I decided to buy some models that I don't want. So of course on Battlestreams Middle Earth we are trying to clear your backlog. We're trying to get models that you don't want out of your backlog, that you don't want to paint, and just paint them for the fun of it. Um, these models weren't in my backlog, these models you know, were available on a, on a, on a web store. Um, but what I loved about it, what I loved about the concept, was that whilst I was buying new models, I was buying new models I didn't want. I've never, you know, I've painted lots of models, like the Last Alliance guys and the Water Horse, I've painted lots of models I didn't want or need, but I already had them. This is this must be the first time in Battlestreams history I've gone out to buy models that I don't want or need and paint them for Battlestreams. It's like Battlestreams then. Now I know a few of you guys have done it. I think some people, if they don't have the model in the backlog, they go out and buy it. So for Gambling Week they might go and pick up a Gambling off eBay and stuff. But I don't think I've done it. So I was like, so something about this idea really, really struck a chord with me. Um, so I meant, I think I mentioned it on Patreon chat, and Mr. Carl Daly, one of our wonderful patrons, said, I've got some in the backlog. And I was like, brilliant. And he had metal ones. Um, and I don't really mind the Citadel resin ones you can get, but there was some joy, there's something joyous about the fact that he said um, he had these metal high elf spearmen that had been stripped. And I was like, oh, I like that. So granted they weren't in my backlog but they'd been someone's at some point and then someone had stripped them they'd been someone's unloved models and the paint job had been discarded and they'd been then passed on and I was like yeah I'm all over that so I had a chat with Carl and he sorted me out and here they are in all their glory four high elf spearmen high elf models with spear and shield I've got them, they're based in the, you know, they've got the sand on and they're primed and by adding these into my army, I get this. Um, he says, Elendil, seven Numenorians with shield, one Numenorian with bow, 
Gilglad, six high elves with bow, seven high elves with blade, and four high elves with spear and shield. And of all the armies, for the first time, that is bang on 600. And it does kind of what I wanted to do. It's got my two big heroes, um, it's got eight of my nine Numenorians, and it's got 17 of my 20 high elves. So that's, you know, it feels like an army. It feels like I'm using most of my models, and it's very, very cool. So, um, that's where we are. As I said, it's Sunday night. And these are very, very white. So that's the plan. That's what I've got to do this week. That's what this vlog's going to be about. Um, I've got a blitz for high off spearmen um, and get them done. I'll have four evenings, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, um, to do it in. Um, I feel like it's very achievable. Uh, apparently, according to the vlog, I went and re watched my hobby vlog about these. Apparently, I did these guys in three evenings and there was eight of them. Um, the downside of these guys, they've got shields, that'll probably take a little longer, but there's four instead of eight, so I think that's doable. So I reckon we can knock these guys um, out. So so that's where we are, and that's the plan. I'm going to be um, painting up four high off spearmen this week that I don't want or don't need, but will get added to my collection, and I'll take them to war at the Battle Streams of Middle Earth and meet up. And I'm just, I'm just super excited about it, it just feels right. So yeah, um, I'll be dropping in probably, probably after each evening just to let you know how we got on and then hopefully um, hopefully I'll be able to take them to war and maybe show you a photo of my last alliance army in all its glory but yeah I um, hope you enjoy it, I hope it's fun, I hope they get painted, let's see you on the other side okay so it's time for an update, it is um, Tuesday evening I'm just about to start painting so this is the, it's sort of two days since um, my last clip this is the progress I made basically on Monday and I have to say I'm very happy and I got to where I needed to be so I'm going to um, show these guys off um, quickly so here we go they got to the point where the base coats are done and they um, and the shades are chucked on now because of that I haven't done any highlights they're going to be quite messy but um, if we have a look at that guy there and we'll talk you through one of the colour schemes um, obviously if you go and look at my vlog I think I said it was number 7 wasn't it um, you see what the colours that I'm actually using for these, but um, just to go through it, um, Auric Armor Gold was the um, gold colour, the blue was Cantor Blue, and the red was um, Wazdaka Red. Um, so that is uh, the red on the cloak there, the gold all over, and the blue for the cloak. Um, and I also, I think the the metal was just the chainmail in there was just um, lead belcher, the skin was Cadian flesh tone and so on and so forth. So um, that was, they were all slopped down without being um, kind of too careful um, about them at all. And then I chucked the um, uh, washes over them so I just used a Drakenhof na nightshade naturally for the um, for the cloak. Um, I used Agrax for the um, for the reds um, Reichland flesh shade for the skin tone um, and I think that was about it and then the last key component as the last time was this bad boy chestnut wash tiny tiny amount of chestnut wash left just enough to get over these um, so I'm going to keep it in case I ever do any more of these high elves maybe that new banner bearer I might be able to put him into this army at some point um, but that was um, that was all chucked over which gives the armour this kind of um, red bronzy um, hue to it um, so that's where I wanted to get to by by last night, and then you can see it, I've also now um, done the bases. I've dry brushed the bases with my two colours as I do the vast majority of my bases, which is Morphan Brown and a Shabti Bone. And I always do that because, as you can see, um, if I do it at this point, um, when I'm using a painting handle, you don't then rub it off, so you don't, you don't damage the bases. But you can see now where that stuff's got onto the bottom of the cloaks, and now I will tidy that up through the highlighting stage. Whereas if you do your highlight first and then your bases, kind of um, run the risk of dry brushing over your um, your old model. Uh, you can see in here on the armour and on this red cloak all the bits where it's kind of um, I've got the wrong colours on it uh, and this is a good example of the sort of thing that I was talking about on my Dale video where I really don't care about this. I'll tidy this up in the highlight stage. I think kind of tidying that up when you do your base coat is potentially a waste of effort. Um, so yeah for me that's that done. I'll put the elf next to it. So this is the finished version so that's exactly the same shading um, and that just gives one highlight of Auric Armour Gold over the top and gets that finished effect which is nice. Um, I also then dry brushed Iron Breaker over the chainmail areas, you can see that in here. Let's go and grab um, I think this guy has an arm which shows off quite well, it's in the neck as well. I just dry brushed a bit of um, uh, 
yeah, Iron Breaker over it. And then because these guys have got these shields that are very, very complicated, lots of kind of um, engraved detail on them. Um, I was a bit worried about those because again, I'm trying to speed paint these and I don't care about them. So I actually dry brushed this just to try to see how it would um, so it would look. All right, over that kind of reddy gold color, uh, you can see it on the, I think you probably see it on the edges still. You can see that orange down the side of the shield there. I just dry brushed Oric Armour's gold over it and it, it actually worked very, very well and it did a good job of picking it up and looking smooth. And then I just very, very gently painted Oric Armour gold onto the kind of flat areas, onto the plate areas. I'm actually pretty happy with how that looks. I think I'm quite pleased with that. So I did the same sort of thing here uh, where you've got the um, helmets. I was sort of annoyed from a speed point of view to find out that the, the Spearman's helmets have this kind of engraved detail that the plastic models don't have. So again, rather than spending hours getting frustrated picking it out, I just dry brush the helmets with the gold and it seems to have worked well. And then what I'm going to do um, on the helmets, I'm going to actually highlight maybe the, the crest and the cheek plates and the nose plates just to make them pop a bit. And so suddenly when I get to my armour highlighting stage, I've only got the um, the kind of um, metal plate armour to do. I don't have to worry about the shields and the helmets and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. And and then the final thing I actually did, just because I had a bit of spare time, but not much spare time, was I had a crack at these jewels. So I just painted the jewel white, and then I put a couple of um, funky blues I've got over the top. So I chucked um, Vallejo um, Transparent Blue, which is quite a fun colour, and I chucked the old GW Turquoise Glaze over it. Um, it looks alright, I suppose, and then I think I'm just going to do that classic thing of just popping a um, little white dot um, where the light catches just to, to make it pop. But um, not too fast, but I think it works quite well. And there we go. So that's where we are at, at, at present. Um, we have four elves um, kind of base coated and shaded, and the highlights actually started. And I've now got three evenings left, so I'm just about to start a painting session tonight, see how far I get. So I might check in with you um, in a couple of hours. After I've hopefully done a bit, but I'm I'm quietly confident now about getting these finished. Maybe dare to dare to dream even tonight and tomorrow and having Thursday off. But we shall see. Onwards. Okay, and here we go. I am delighted to say I've just applied the flock to them on Friday morning, and we are good to go. So my four women are done in time for the meetup. Let's um, have a quick look at the finished act. Again, it's not um, amazing by any stretch of imagination, but and we'll see how to do it. I think I said last time I saw you that I was going to check in after every stage, and I just I just didn't do that. I just um, kind of got on painted essentially. Um, so um, here we go. We have Wazdaka red, um, Oregon gold, um, Cantor blue. Um, those are the three main colours, and then chestnut wash all over the armour. Um, uh, I think Agrax over that, and Drakenoff nightshade over the cloaks, and then just a just a colour reset really. So um, just white tucker red highlight on the red, cantor blue highlight on the cloaks, and auric armor gold highlight on the um, on the uh, armor. Uh, you'll also see that um, I had a go at eyes, but in classic um, b sign sense, I didn't bother trying to correct them. I blobbed some white in, blobbed some black in, and just um, left left them as they were. Um, we really we really don't care. I'm too much about them. Uh, I have to say, as well as Carl giving me a big shout out for the Spearman, I have to um, do a big shout out to um, Dewey Evans, who sorted me out a couple of um, bonus um, Rivendell shields. Um, that's these ones that you ran off for me. And they're very, very cool. And I actually added um, a hand on both of these from a discarded plastic um, high elf, because um, Dewey's uh, shields don't come with hands, but that kind of that kind of worked out quite well, I think. Um, but yeah, they're, they're mega. Um, they're, again, as always, this kind of thing isn't going to win any um, painting awards, but they um, they fit in nicely with my army. I think um, I'm going to grab one of my archers, he says, having shut the case. I wonder if I'll cut this bit out in the future. Probably not. Uh, here's the archer that I painted. Oh. 12 years ago, and here's the new version, and I think that's a pretty good colour match. Pretty happy with that, all things considered. But yeah, there we go. Um, really, really pleased with them. Um, I've got them done in a week. Four wonderful models um, out the backlog, and I can't wait to take them to war. Um, what I also thought would be fun to do, I'll show you some of the heroes because 
um, as much as I did on Age of Gone B-Side, my, my kind of Numenorean heroes, my Last Alliance heroes, didn't make it into a um, into a vlog. Now, for one reason or another, I think I was doing, I think I was painting them when I was doing the kind of battle companies vlogs, and so I thought I'd just take you on a tour around them. So, let's start with the most recent one, which is Gilgalad. Here he is. This is literally painted, again, just following the guide in Battle Streams of Middle Earth. I painted him basically in an evening on one of the streams. So he's a little more detailed than the High Off Spearman. There's this cool thing that they um, recommend on B Sign where you take kind of green armor. I think, I can't remember now, but I think you paint the armor dark green to begin with and then start highlighting up. And it works really well. It's really nice. Uh, quite pleased with his face, actually, for, for a quick paint job. He, he seems to have um, seems to have come out quite well. Certainly holds up at this at this level anyway. Again, I'm not painting these to be amazing. I just want to get them done, and um, and they are indeed done. Gilglad model. I've never really liked. Always, I know it gets a bit of um, hate, but I, I wouldn't say I've kind of been completely converted and fallen in love with it. But it is better than I thought it was. I'll say that much. Apparently, um, a gloss isn't meant to look like that, and this is bent. But it's too late. I've painted it like that now, and I'm, I've kind of fallen in love with it. So, um, uh, yeah. So there we go. Lovely little headpiece he's got in there. But yeah, so that's just following the guide in Battle Games of Middle Earth. That was um, Gilgalad done. Um, and then way back when, uh, during our last light swing, we did um, Isildur, who was again just painted following the guide in Battle Streams of Middle Earth. I had a go, because the magazine recommended it, of um, doing the freehand stuff. And again, what's really weird is if I cared about this model, I kind of might not have attempted it. Because it was a Battle Streams model, I just blobbed them on. And I was like, who? <laughs> Who the hell cares how how good it looks? So um, I had a little go at doing that trim, and it kind of you know it looks all right, I suppose. Certainly good enough for um, a kind of model to lead this army that I truly don't care about. Um, I can't remember the paint scheme for this one really, but again, it's just following the guide straight up. But another head, I think that was I was quite pleased with for a speed paint job. But yeah, there he is. I see the loo. I see the loo. And obviously I painted up his dad, Elendil, um, in exactly the same, same colour scheme. He had an a extra black um, cloak and a bit of kind of cream in here, uh, which was quite fun. I think that was from working up from Tau Light Oak or something, because he's got loads of static grass on his cloak there. Let's see if we can get rid of that. Yeah, that's a bit bad. Um, but yeah, again, I was I was surprisingly pleased with how well these came out for mega mega quick um, paint jobs, not going to win any awards, but by any means, but they they are painted you know slightly better than my warriors. If I like hold him up next to a kind of high off, he he looks like he's been brought on several stages further, but um, you know wasn't too much of a hardship um, at all. It's getting done. I really genuinely really enjoyed it. And the final one, he's not quite a Last Lions hero. I'm going to include him here because, again, he hasn't been on the blog and he was of the same era and painted era and, and um, B Sime era, not um, Middle Earth era, and painted in the same scheme. But that is this guy who is my Aragorn. So we did the Return of the King um, special uh, the week, it was, I think it was in the middle of the Last Alliance swing, and he was just literally painted up in exactly the same colour scheme as Elendil. Um, so, you know, just following exactly the same techniques. And again, um, a model that I had no desire to get done, but um, was just a load of fun painting up over a couple of evenings um, uh, on on the Beast Time streams. So there we go. So those are four heroes. Um, as I said, three of these were painted ages ago. I will be taking um, a Lendil to the meet up, but Gilgal has just been finished on the um, on the latest stream. So these are going to be my leaders for my um, last alliance army, my Beast Time last alliance army um, this weekend. But I've also got these guys. Um, done and cleared from a few uh, months ago. So there we go, exciting times, I'm very happy, and my a plan now to kind of come back after the meetup and just kind of sign off the video with a bit of a debrief and maybe tell you how the um, Last Alliance got on. So I will, uh, I'll see you there. Well, I'm back. Oh yes, I am back from the B-Sign meetup. So, um, you have just seen my finished High Elf Spearman, which I managed to get done in time, which was awesome. And I took them to war for our uh, annual B-Sign meetup. And it was amazing. It went really well. Uh, it was really good fun. Um, I imagine on the stream, I'm hoping that there's been a stream just before you see this vlog, essentially. 
and um, depends on what's about to happen next, really. But um, on that, on that, on that stream, I, I suppose we're going to uh, go into the B side meetup in some detail. So I'm not going to go through it and um, and review it all here. But safe to say, it was a wonderful weekend where we we headed away for um, the whole of Saturday um, to get some games and socialise in, and also a Friday night, and we had. Uh, fun times at the pub. I managed to get in six great games across the course of the weekend. I got. I managed to get in uh, two against Daniel Entwistle, two against Mr. Dale Groves, um, one against Max Malice, and one against uh, Michael Haskell, which are all amazing. Um, using my last alliance army, and I had so much fun. Um, so 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 much fun. Far more fun than I expected to have with them. Um, and huge twist. They did really well. They won five out of six games. Um, obviously, the it's not a GBHL 100 pointer. You know, the whole nature of the B-Sun meetup is that it's um, kind of you know chilled out people playing with chilled out armies. But taking my um, starter set army, um, which uh, which I might flash a picture up of, of but um, I think I've gone through actually what I had. But basically, it's essentially the starter set models from the Fellowship of the Ring. Um, kind of roughly speaking, a you know six bow elves. Um, for the bow limit, then eight L's with blades, and then um, eight Numenorians essentially, what you, what you get in the box it was about that, and then adding in Gilgalad and Lendil. And they did really well, they just, Gilgalad and Lendil just did the work. So um, it was awesome, truly, truly awesome, um, doing, as I, as I believe I set out in this vlog, the most B sum thing I've ever done, and taking, uh, taking an army that's almost entirely been painted for Battle Streams in Middle Earth to the Battle Streams of Middle Earth meetup and um, it was it was really really mega and I loved it and I, I really enjoyed using it. Um, I showed you my case, I think it's still here, I showed you my last Alliance case I think at the start of this vlog which is now um, full with um, with some more models in it because the spearmen are now in it and then um, I took it all along and I was thinking oh what else have I got in there just see you know, what, what if I chucked a Lendl in, what if I chucked um, a Sildur, uh, sorry I've got a Lendl on, <laughs> what if I chucked Elrond in, what if I chucked a Sildur in and I started adding up, and um, well, this this was this was meant to be it. This was meant to be the end of the vlog, but a, a strange thing happened. As I added it up, um, I'll try and maybe put an army list up here um, on the screen now for you. But if I take Gilgalad and Elrond with heavy armor, and all um, eight of my high elves as Kingsguard, and all eight of my high elf bowmen, um, uh, with um, obviously with bow, and then all four of my um, spearmen as King's Guard, and then Elendil and Isildur, and all eight of my Numenorians, and Jeff the Numenorian Bowman, it makes a magnificent 960 points, I believe I believe is the um, is the total, which of course is fine, but just seems agonisingly short of 1,000, doesn't it? You'll also know that still, still, that high off bow limit's not legal. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, you know, we've got the um, eight high olds with um, blade, four with um, shield, and eight with bow. So we're probably are we are we two bows over what we could have. We could probably have seven with that, can we? Um, maybe we're one over. But yeah, um, it's not legal, and I'm forty points down. Now let's be super super clear. I have no plans to take this to a thousand point event. There is no one thousand point event coming up. Um, I'm not planning on taking it at all. Um, and but there's just something about the OCD part of my brain that goes. Oh, wouldn't it be nice if you could finish off this project by getting to a thousand points and making it entirely legal so I could take everything should I want to. So what I essentially need to do to be able to take eight bowmen is get to 22 high off warriors. Because um, 21 is seven bowmen, so 22 is eight bowmen. And you can see currently um, I've got 20 high off warriors. 8 blades, 8 bows, and 4 spears and shields. So what I need is 2 more high elves that add up to 40 points. It's quite difficult to do. Unless one of those high elves perhaps holds a shiny flag. Um, one of the things I really felt that I missed um, over the course of the weekend was a banner. I, I was constantly after that reroll, and suddenly it occurred to me, hang on, a high elf with banner, that's about 35 points another high elf, it's 40 and we're done. The high elf I sorted and allow me to lean out of frame for a moment. Um, I got my daughter a massive um, bag of broken models um, a few years back so that she could try out her painting and inside it I managed to salvage. I found this guy, 
who as you can see is not broken but is badly painted and I managed to find this guy who is unpainted but has a broken blade and I reckon I can get these two together and get this guy's blade onto this guy to get my high off so there he is he's come from not even come from my backlog he's come from Charlotte's backlog so he's free and I was having such a great um, weekend at um, Warhammer World using my last alliance model with my Rivendell dice get hold of some of these by the way they are so good <laughs> Lot you'll be seeing lots of these symbols um, I had such a good laugh that at the end of it I just wanted I, I cracked I was like I just want to get myself a treat and a little a little treat to take home and kind of remember the weekend by and wouldn't you know it this dear boy had just been released so Elrond the new Elrond pack gorgeous Elrond on foot don't care about that gorgeous Elrond on horse don't care about that gorgeous high of banner bearer oh we care about him so I have um, I've done in this video, which I believe is called the least be something or the most be something I've ever done, it's now getting even more be something or even less be something because I've now picked up um, a box of models with two heroes that I don't want to get a banner bearer. So I've got no plans to do the Elrond whatsoever, so they're going to be added to the backlog. But whilst that's two models added to the backlog, I'm going to get one for the banner and one for this guy painted. So we've, we've kind of got a net, this bonus bit of the vlog has got a net increase of zero on the backlog which is which is pretty mega so yeah I picked up this amazing kit and I've got my high elf and I'm now going to do that now in this vlog I am going to um, get this guy built and painted up get this guy cleaned up and converted up so he's all ready to go and um, speed paint them uh, just as the way I have done the others now before everyone feels um, starts throwing up this guy I'm going to paint like a hero I'm going to paint him up um, exactly as I did um, the other guys, but then I'm going to take him to another level because he, he's just so good. The model's just so, so good. So I'm going to paint him exactly the same as them high elves, but then when that high off there is finished, I'm going to keep it going with this guy and just add another kind of at least one more layer of highlights to every part of every part of it. But yeah, there we go. That's what I'm going to be doing now. Um, I should be, I should be stopping. I should be um, maybe starting to work on my Throne Scrolls project, maybe finally finishing the long-suffering Dale Knights, but no, what I'm doing is painting up a broken High Elf Warrior and painting up a um, High Elf Banner Bearer for an army that I truly don't want or need. Um, doesn't get much more B-sign than that really, does it? So um, yeah, that's the plan, that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, I'm going to jump over now and I might um, show you the kind of some conversion bits and um, uh, some of the sprues for this guy and um, we'll get stuck in. Who knew there's going to be an epilogue? And so here we go, here is the um, wonderful new Elrond box. Um, I decided, um, I'm, I know there's loads of these out there and they'll do it better than me, but I decided to do a little bit of a cheeky unboxing for this just to um, show off one of the um, hopefully quite new um, cool toys. Um, as you can see, Elrond is £27.50 and you get those three lovely models, but um, who cares about the box art? Let's see what's inside. As ever, there's a paint guide which is um, wonderfully brief. Oh, look, what's it suggesting to us? So, the cloak colours are Cantor Blue, Nail Nail and Cantor Sky, and the armour colours Liberator Gold, Cycle Brown and Storm Hoax. Do you know what? That's better than they used to be. At least at least now they're just saying, alright, here's how you paint the armour, and I could believe that would work, and here's how you paint the cloak, and I believe that could work. And um, I can't be asked to tell you how to paint the horse and the cloak and the skin and all that. Um, it's much better than when, in the old days when they just put like six colours on the back and said, there you go, step one, buy these six paints. Step three, paint Elrond like this. Um, so that's maybe a slight improvement. Anyhow, let's have a look inside, see what we got. Oh, it's one sprue. One sprue, is that really? Well, go, man. I assume this is going to be two sprues. How very cool. Um, this is the standard number of bases. So I'll work at GW, but yeah, one sprue. Who would have thought it? That is mega. I managed to get that all on one. Alright, so let's have a look, shall we? Um, here it is, the one sprue. Uh, we've got some faces up here. The, um, I think the one with the mouth open is on horse. 
and that's obviously on foot there. Um, I was thinking, I'm really impressed on the box art when seeing it that the mounted one looks like a Kraken likeness to Hugo Weaving. And I remember thinking that this one didn't necessarily, but that that might be the paint job. And what's really interesting is looking at this, I wouldn't actually say that the one mounted looks particularly like Hugo Weaving. Um, so I guess a lot of it will be when you put the um, put the hair on it and it will um, kind of help to sell that. But, um, beautiful, beautiful faces. You can see the, the kind of almost like, like, like wrinkle lines, frown lines carved on there. Really lovely stuff. There's the guy we're interested in. Now the high up Oh, I say the guy. He's got no face. I wonder where his face is. Um, let's go and have a look here. There's his face. Okay, so here is the guy we're really interested in. So looking at that, I am delighted to see that it is very much like the uh, models that I've been painting, but instantly I've put all my, um, I haven't got any of the actual plastic high offs to hand at the moment, but instantly you can see the improvement here that the um, the old models, even the metal ones, all these plates are just flat. They don't just they don't have this raised edge like this. So um, given that this is only one model I'm going to be painting, that definitely I'll, I'll be doing some super edge highlighting on that already. I can already see this taking more time than I thought I would in a good way. But I wouldn't want to paint an army like that. But that's um, that kind of rim there just isn't on the old um, model. So you see the improvements already. It's just beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, we've got a blade. That's, that's maybe an Elrond or maybe a banner bear. Here's what I'm really interested in. The banner itself. Lovely to see all that sculpted detail on there. Um, still going to be painting the arse to paint. That ain't going to be easy, but we'll um, we'll see what we can do. Uh, same on the back, obviously. Um, what else have I got? Let's go down here. We've got a cloak from Elrond. I think this is, um, someone was saying, one of our patrons was saying that this goes behind him. So you've got this beautiful scabbard detail that you'll never ever see. <laughs> Uh, it's just a lovely attention to detail, quite in keeping with like the um, wetter mode where I remember Thad and say, uh, Bernard Hill saying that he had like um, wonderful inscriptions on the inside of his breastplate that no one would ever see, but he saw every day when he put it on. Gorgeous detail on his hair. Uh, this small thing looks like a foot. These are feet for the mounted version. Why does that need to be separate? The mysteries of um, mould making. Uh, we have what looks like probably the mounted version's body, I think. Yeah, looking absolutely mega. Um, <laughs> we have half a horse. So far, so obvious. Nice flat, nice large flat area here to glue down, so the contact point's quite good. Uh, this horse looks like it's only got. How many points has that got? If we look at it, it looks like it might be the only one. Possibly this is touching the base, don't know. But um, you need that kind of big area there, which is nice. Um, got a little arm here, Elrond arm or something, who knows. Uh, the other half of the horse, the horse is it's another amazing kind of um, new horse. I think the Forge World and plastic horses they've been doing are just absolutely staggering. He looks, he looks mega. See where there is a little foot must go on there or something, I suppose. Um, and we are then down to this corner, I believe. So we've got Elrond on foot. Looking cool. Elrond on foot, and look, this is the way these models go together. Now look, that's his ear, and then that face is going to slot on into there somehow. And then over here we have, I think this is the Banner Bearer's Cloak. Got a leg down there, that's cool. Is it Banner Bear's cloak or is it Elrond? I think it's the Banner Bear's cloak because that's the Banner Bear's hand on his on his um on the uh, haft is that of his sword? Cool, more more um lovely design that's probably going to be hidden. Oh, I've been banging on about the Dale cloak that does this. How good is that? The imprint of the sword coming through. Lovely, lovely stuff. And then there we have um Elrond on foot's um blades. So um, there we go, that's that sprue, which I think is absolutely mega. Um, I like it a lot. And Elrond, sadly, I have no interest in. <laughs> so I'm not going to build Elrond, I'm not going to build mounted Elrond. I'm only interested in the Banner Bearer for now, and Elrond will go and um, wait his damn turn. Um, just while I've got the kind of green 
um, bits of the um, of the board out. I thought I'd show you a bit more detail on the planned conversion. Is it conversion? God, uh, rescue that I'm going to do. So I've got this plot high up, and actually, oh, I said I didn't have any. I've got one right here. Compare those. Compare the armor plates. You see what I mean? These are all. These are the one on the plastic. Um, Last Alliance Elf. They're both plastic. Last Alliance Elf. The old Elf. It just has these flat plates, which are really easy to paint. Whereas the new guy's got these raised panels around the edge, um, which you know, from a speed painting point of view, makes me feel ill. But let's bear in mind, I'm going to put a little more attention and effort into this guy. So we'll see. So anyway, um, I've got this guy. Um, He's in really good nick, except for the fact he lost his elf blade. And I've got this guy, who's been very badly painted by someone in the past. Um, I'm not gonna, I just can't be asked to um, strip it, I can't be bothered. So rather than just painting him where he's already got a lot of paint on, what I'm gonna do is nick the elf blade. Now, obviously the kind of most obvious choice is just to cut the elf blade off there and glue it on here. But I don't think that will be particularly strong. So what I'm actually gonna do is take his hands I'm going to cut here and cut here, so I've got the blade as all one piece with two points to glue to this guy. Then I'm going to glue that onto here. And so um, I think a that will be stronger and less likely to break. Um, and then it'll all, it'll mean that the only bit of the um, painted model I'm using is the kind of I don't even know if his hands have been painted. Maybe his hands didn't get touched. Uh, but is the is the blade? As so I'll rescue that. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do with him. So I'm going to um, assemble those and um, uh, convert those and get more cleaned up ready to spray and I think what I'll hopefully do is probably show you those both those models before I paint them next. Um, so you see, very excited. Okay so here we are and after an enjoyable evening of assembly they are done. Let's start with the boring guy, here is my elf who has now had his hands swapped over. You see now um, so you can see the joints, but hopefully you can't really see the joints, but those two fists have been cut off. The other elf, uh, I haven't got him here to hand, sorry. Uh, but the blade and the two fists are one piece that have been cut off the other elf and glued onto the wrists of this elf. Because I used a good bit of um, plastic glue or poly cement, um, it kind of does that thing where it melts it, and so you don't necessarily get the get the same gaps, because the bond it creates is much better. So I'm pretty pleased with how that went. You never quite know if you're going to cut at the right angle. Also, while I was cleaning up the blade, just using a file, I was actually able to just file away a lot of the um, silver paint from the from the blade from the first paint job. So um, he's in pretty good nick. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, you know what poly cement's like. That 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 those hands will never come off now. Um, but I think it looks pretty good. Uh, I've got some sand glued down, and he's um, ready to be primed. But over to the main event. Here is the brand new banner bear, and I've got to say this model is so good. Put them next to it for a sort of size comparison. See they're pretty damn good. This guy looks a little kind of looks like a slightly beefier elf, I guess. They you know height wise they're they're perfect. They're right next to each other. This guy just look, looks a little more imposing, a little more like a hero I suppose. Um, but it's just beautiful. The way the plastic kit goes together is absolutely gorgeous as ever. There's a join here on the armour plate to the um, hand, which you, I'm sure you can't see. But um, it, again, it just goes to show the cleverness of the way these kits go together now that they, they actually make the join where there would be a join on, on the um, on the model. It's pretty seamless how this armour um, glues into the cloak inside there. No gaps down here where the armour meets the cloak. Just beautiful. And again, around the back here, the join on the hand is just where the um, armour meets the hand, so it makes a lot of sense. Just absolutely beautiful. And there's the detail on the banner. So, I love it. It's beautiful. I'm just going to paint it up in exactly the same way, and then um, take it further. So, really happy with this, making good progress so far. And I think what I'll do is I'll come back when these models are finished to this standard. So the sort of standards you've seen the high elf spearman, I'm going to paint them both to that standard, show you off this guy, show you how the banner bearer looks and then um, kind of push him on to the uh, to the next level. Uh, so yeah, there we go. Um, very excited, and I'll see you soon. Okay, so here we are, um, uh, not long after, and um, after a successful couple of evenings of work, um, my Warrior of the Last Lines is finished. Um, so this guy should look exactly like um, all the ones you've seen before um, on the Hobby Vlogs and on um, 
the the spears earlier and the spear and shield guys earlier in the vlog. So it's exactly the same colour scheme, just using West Dacker Red, um, Cantor Blue and Orikama Gold, shading the gold with um, Chestnut Wash, the red with Agrax Earth Shade and the blue with um, Dracanov Nightshade, and then reset reset in the base colours. So he's cool. The eyes weren't too bad. Again, as always on these guys, I didn't bother trying to tidy them up. I just blobbed white and blobbed black and then um, put the kind of dark shadow base colour around the edge and I'm pretty happy with how that ended up. It's kind of cool. Um, and you know, you can see actually now he's painted that the arm join here is clearly a bit wonky but um, who the hell cares. That's my ninth um, elf with blade. He'll get chucked in a box. So he's now finished apart from the um, base room um, which I'll do when I have also finished. This guy. So this is now our banner bearer who was painted to exactly the same point as that guy. The only difference is because I care about this guy a little bit more, I use Caraberg Crimson to shade his um, red bit instead of Earthshade. So it's hopefully the, the folds in that are a bit more subtle. I just thought, um, given that I'm gonna do some more highlights on this guy, I could take my time rather than going for the kind of extreme highlights there. But yeah, so he should look exactly the same, but hopefully now you can see how the model pops. The cloak is really, really lovely. Um, Lovely work on the chain mail. And um, it, it would be absolutely fine now. You can actually see that I've done nothing at all on the banner after the shading it. Because um, I was just painting them, uh, I was painting the two of them sort of side by side. Doing every level and so I haven't spent any time on the banner yet. So whilst he could be done, I was pretty pleased with his eyes as well. For a warrior anyway. Um, I'm now going to take this guy and kind of pimp him up essentially. So this guy I'm going to... Uh, it'll probably end up looking better than the heroes I've painted for this army because the heroes were sort of speed painted in B-Sub style. But I am going to just spend a bit of time, probably a couple of evenings, and maybe give every area here another two highlights. So the gold, I'm definitely going to do kind of some Liberator gold highlights and some um, Runefang steel edge highlights that will then be um, kind of knocked back with Seraphim Sepia Glaze. And then the reds, I'm going to kind of go up into an orangey and then back down into a deep red. And the cloak, I'll go up into a couple of blues and stuff. So I'm not going to go crazy on it, but I'm just going to have a bit of fun um, make, trying to make him pop a little. And then also paint the um, dreaded banner. I think I'm going to do the banner as a separate job one evening because um, despite the fact it's sculpted on, I don't know if you can see that there's actually there's an awful lot of detail to kind of pick out there. Um, so I'm going to save that as the kind of final touch, I think. So that's where we are. So pretty pleased, but now. Can you um, just put a bit more time into this wonderful new sculpt? And so I reckon next time you see him, they should both be done. Okay, and so a couple of evenings later, here we are, and I am um, delighted to say that he is done. So you saw the kind of finished L4L last time. Um, last time I saw you, I said I was going to pimp this guy up, and here he is, um, sufficiently sufficiently pimped. So this is my finished version. So if we're going to get. Looks like a fairly good re um, representation of the colours. So what we've done, I think the chainmail is exactly the same. I don't think I did anything to the chainmail areas. The um, cloak has been highlighted up. I think I used, um, I just basically mixed bleached bone, I think, into the Cantor blue to kind of um, highlight up. And then, oh, I don't know, probably Corvus grey, I think it was, mixed back into it to kind of shade back down. But I just put a few extra layers on there so easy when you're just doing one model and you don't have to match the colours of anything else you can just kind of play about with a bit and you don't have to worry about kind of colour matching then the reds were done with um, I think a flesh colour might have been something like Tau Light Ochre but equally might have been like um, one of the Cadian flesh tone or something um, I, I think the red's probably been the least successful bit if I'm honest it, the contrast isn't, isn't great I try to keep it subtle so it doesn't go too orange or too pink um, but I, th I think it's alright, I think it looks pretty good from a distance and all that, but again, it's only a warrior, I don't really care. Um, so we had that bit. There's been some more kind of um, work done on the brows, particularly on the strapping around there. And I also went absolutely to town on the armour. So I think I actually described what I was planning to do in the last one, and I think I pretty much did that. That the panels, so the flat panels, were all given a little coat of Liberator gold. So that's gone a bit, a bit brighter and a bit kind of paler. And then the edges, you can see this kind of, I think I've pointed them out at various points in this video before. Hopefully you can see the panels all have a ridge along the edge of them. And that was kind of picked out in, <clears throat> um, I can't remember honestly, but I think either Runefang Steel or Stormhost Silver. Um, and the same with those little, can you see these little blobs on the end? There's one, two, three, four, five of these little bits kind of coming down here. Uh, they were picked out in the same. And then what I did was I used Seraphim Sepia 
and just um, and just very very lightly glaze them back. So that's the that's the finished effect on those those panels there. Try and get its focus in there. You can see why it looks like it's got a kind of gold edge highlight, but the paint was actually a um, was actually silver, and then a little seraphim sepia glaze over the top. And then just to differentiate, I thought I was going to be finished, but I then just picked out this. Let's say these little blobs, and they run down here, and there's one on here. I just picked them out again in um, a very light coat of um, Stormhouse Silver, just to kind of um, make it pop again. And then the last bit that I hadn't done anything on was the banner, and here is the banner. And I have to say, this isn't really my forte, but I'm pretty pleased with how this came out. So um, it was, I can't remember what order, I think I, I basically did a blue, then a white, then a blue, then a white, then a blue, then a white. I was taking it in turns rather than doing all the blue and all the white to give myself a chance of tidying it up. But I basically picked out all the kind of blue areas with Cantor Blue, tried to reset that base colour. Then I painted all the white areas ultra and grey, which is the kind of bluey white. Um, then I think I mixed in maybe some Hoeth Blue into Cantor Blue and did the highlights, which were just, um, you know, I wasn't trying to actually paint it in too much detail, I was just trying to put little lines in. You can hopefully see, uh, where's my finger? Just in this bit here where the star is, you can hopefully see there's just a few little kind of <clears throat> a paintbrush swell basically of a lighter blue in there and then I um, and then I took uh, Corax white I think it was and went over the um, the white areas to kind of tidy those up and then I think I just used two more blues maybe Cantor blue and maybe Corax white again I just went back in and tried to tidy up some of the areas that I'd missed with the white and then tidy up some of the areas I'd missed with the blue and um, <clears throat> I have to say, actually, I'm really pleased with it. I think certainly from here, it looks fantastic. And even up close, it doesn't look too bad. Um, it's a lovely banner, lovely, lovely detail on it, but there's an awful lot to kind of pick out, and those swirls are, I find quite tricky to do. But, um, yeah, this I, I'd say that banner went better than I thought it would have gone, I guess is the best way I can um, kind of compliment it. Um, and I think that's it. I think that's it done. So it was, it was really good fun. I really enjoyed it. Just a couple of evenings working on one model. Um, again, for the joy of it, for the um, for the thrill of it. And this feels like a really, really nice end to this little Last Alliance project that I've done on B-Side. Uh, it's been really nice. I'm really glad I bought this model and kind of um, painted them up. Um, it's been a really nice way to celebrate um, the Last Alliance swing from Battle Streams, but also um, the, getting to use them in the Battle Streams meetup. Uh, I'm really pleased with it. So there we go, that's the end of that, and very nearly to the end of the blog, so I'm just going to go back to the chair and sign off for you, and um, we'll see how we feel. So there we go, um, that is the end of this little project, project and this little vlog. Um, I think I started this one, all told, somewhere between about three and four weeks ago, um, in, in the end. But um, it's, it's been great, it's been really good fun. Um, the idea of just speed painting up some spearmen, um, hopefully taking you in by way of some uh, a cheeky set of goblin prowlers. Um, and those those last alliance heroes that I painted ages ago, just to kind of show them off a bit, um, and then take obviously get to take that um, that battle stri that battle streams army to the to battle streams meet up and have a lot of fun, and then get to paint this dude um, as a kind of final celebration of the project. It was it was really really good, cool. cool. Um, it's kind of as I said at the start, is it the most be something I've done? Is it the least be something I've done? But it's felt great and it's felt really. Um, I've, I've helped clear my backlog a bit. I've I've. It, I've improved my painted to unpainted ratio. I've had some great games with unexpected models. I've done some really kind of fun and cool hobby, and that I think is very, very B time. So um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really pleased, really pleased with the with the um, the unexpected journey I've been on here. Um, now, um, it's always good to look forward. I want to be careful here. Um, uh, that should be it. The, this guy should be the kind of the crowning jewel in my last alliance collection. And he's going away, and I'm certainly not doing any more on them now. But um, just as a as a small teaser, um, the 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 fun I've had this week, or in this in this vlog, and the fun I've had at the Beast Meetup with them, has sparked a little something for next year. So whilst this is the end of the Last Alliance stuff now, um, you know I think you had some of the Last Alliance stuff back in March, April time in a vlog, and now you're getting this one. Um, I would expect that sometime next year there's going to be one more Last Alliance vlog. Um, maybe around um, maybe around the middle of the year, around June, July, I think there's going to be a Last Alliance vlog. So I think the, the Last Alliance will return for me because I've, I've a little, there's been a little spark here which has been really good fun. But um, not for now. For now we get to sign off. Um, sorry, there's been a very, very long time in between hobby vlogs. Um, I haven't not been doing anything. I've been doing actually quite a lot of hobby in different areas. It's just I haven't been able to kind of properly finish a hobby vlog and 
my long, long, long delayed Dale hobby vlog has been interrupted by this one, for example. So um, yeah, I, I hope this one's been worth the wait. I think it'll be quite chunky in the end. I think it's probably around the hour mark because of these bonus kind of Spearman content, but who knows. But my hope is that there'll be another hobby vlog along pretty quick. Um, I'd say maybe within two weeks, hopefully. And that will be the, the um, th is it the third Dale video? I think it's the third Dale video. But the one where I finally finish up my, my nights and my heroes, that'll be coming along next. So um, yeah, hopefully you'll be able to look out for that. Um, until then, um, we I hope we'll see you on the next um, on the next um, b Sam live stream. Uh, make sure you check them out. If you are new here, if you're enjoying the content, please, please, please click, sub click the subscribe button. It really does help. And if you've enjoyed what I'm doing here, please leave a comment. It's not for the algorithm, it's just for me. Um, I do read them all and I try and reply to them all and it really does mean the world to me. Um, if, so if you have watched the video and you've enjoyed it, please let me know what you think down below and I'll get back to you. It really does help and, um, with the motivation to keep going. Other than that, I think that's everything. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you very soon here on Battlestreams in Middle Earth. Take care.